good morning, Lehman Eye Town. And good morning to those who are joining us through the wonders of technology. I'm Pastor Laura, and very glad to see everybody this morning in one form or the other. Does anybody have any announcements? I do from Zoom. Okay. I meant to mention it to you earlier, Pastor, but we did receive a call Saturday, so that was yesterday, that someone has been calling individuals in our community using the church information to try to obtain information from you as a parishioner. That is not us, so I think that we all need to be vigilant on receiving phone calls and any kind of possible scams that might be coming out. We will let you know if we're doing any kind of communications that need you or your information. Yes, has anybody here received any of those calls? I'm relieved to hear that, but please, if you ever get a text, a call, an email that's asking for money or personal information and it says it's from the pastor or the church, please reach out to me, reach out to Amy. One of us will know what's going on. So please do that rather than lose money or rather than give out your personal information and put yourselves at risk. We would never ask for a social security number ever <laughs> unless you're employed by the church and that would be different. So please, that is what this individual said is happening. We just need to be vigilant. Did you hear that? We will never ask for social security information like that. So, and please let us know if you receive anything like that so we can pass the word on and try to protect one another. Others. And file complaints. Huh? And, and file, file an official complaint, yes. Other announcements. Did I see Kim wave her hand? Oh, she's saying hi. <laughs> Any others? There are a couple I would like to draw your attention to in the bulletin and then one not in the bulletin. Vacation Bible School is coming July 6th through the 10th from 6 to 8 p.m. So mark your calendars. Keep this wonderful, fantastic time to teach our children the stories of Jesus in prayer. And also, um, Tuesday evening at 6.30 in the basement of the church, we will have an ad council meeting that anybody is welcome to attend, but only council members are able to vote. I have a thank you note I'd like to share with everyone this morning that says thank you for your kind words and support again and again. It has truly means the world. Stevie Kiosk, Sabrina's daughter. And we'll post that on the bulletin board then with some of the other thank you notes. Coming up the end of this month, Amy is taking a very well-deserved vacation. And that will be Sunday June 27th. If you would like to see Zoom continue, we need somebody who's willing to step up and host for that day. Please, if you think you'd like to do that, but technology you're not so sure about, you know how to Zoom in, but to run it, you don't know what's going on, but you'd be willing to step up, let us know, we'll be glad to train you. And uh, so pray about that. It is a vital ministry of the church. Are there any others? Then let's prepare our hearts for worship.
body or spirit as we join in the opening prayer found on the screen or in the bulletin. Let us pray together. All powerful God, in Jesus Christ you turn death into life and defeat into victory. Grant us an awareness of your Holy Spirit directing this service of worship in your honor. Increase our faith and trust in Christ, that we may triumph over all evil in the strength of our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let's join in majesty, worship his majesty. Today is Graduate Sunday, so this is going to speak to anyone in school of any kind. Anyone else out there besides uh, Madeline and Brady is going to school? And I know you guys are going to school, and maybe Callie if she's there, and if Randy's on with us. So this is going to speak to them. I was lost once. I mean physically lost. Not lost like you can get lost because you forgot that Jesus is your savior. I got lost. I went to a picnic. Some of you know this story. I went to a picnic with my boyfriend at the time, who then became my husband, in Lake Jean. There's a lake on one side, a parking lot on the other, and we were in a picnic ground. And it started to rain unexpectedly. It was pouring. So my husband, at the, well, my boyfriend's grandma, and we called her Graham, she went with uh, Jack's brother to the car. Jack had to stay with our hibachi, which was so hot, it had hot coals on it, we couldn't put it in the car. And I packed up a bag of all the other things that we took on a picnic and tried to run to the car. And for some reason, I got lost between 
the picnic area, and the parking lot. And I couldn't find, I know Jayden, right? Jayden slapping his head. I couldn't find the car. I must have gone through it six times, and I was getting so upset. And it was just pouring buckets. And then finally, of course, the paper bag, you know what happens when it gets wet? What happens when a paper bag gets wet? It rips and it tore and of course everything was in glass bottles in the 60s so there was the mustard and the ketchup and whatever else and the meat and hot dogs all over. So a couple came to help me and said, you know, let us help you get to your car. I was like, I don't know where my car is. I can't find it anywhere. I've been walking around. So shortly I hear a, feel a tap on my shoulder and it was Jack. What are you doing, Suze? What are you doing? What's wrong? Why are you crying? And I said, I've been lost all this time. I haven't even gotten to the car yet. And he goes, the hibachi's cooled already. The coals aren't, the rain is stopping and you're still going around here. I couldn't find that car. And he said, look up. And there it was, two away from us. Now Graham and, and his brother Boyd couldn't see us because the rain had, couldn't see me because the rain had hit the window so hard. But there it was. All along, I wasn't really lost at all. I just couldn't find my way. So today, I want to read something that Jesus said to us. Now, keep this in mind. It's not getting lost like I was. This is losing your direction because you forgot to serve Jesus. You forgot that there's Jesus with us all the time. So Jesus said, let me ask you a question. If any of you has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost, what will you do? Jaden? Go find it. Go find it. Very good, thank you. Won't you leave the 99 in the field and go find the lost sheep? You'll look until you find it. And when you find it, you will be so glad that you'll put it on your shoulders and carry it home. Then when you call in your friends and neighbors and say, let's celebrate, I found my lost sheep. Jesus said in the same way, there's more happiness in heaven because of one sinner who turns to God than over 99 good people who don't need to. So that's another kind of way of being lost is being away from Jesus. So as you start, uh, what are we starting next year? Kindergarten? Patrick, right? First grade? Second grade, fourth grade, 12th grade? fresh uh, sophomore, junior sophomore, whatever your, and, and your freshman year of college, and whatever, uh, Callie, uh, fifth grade? Yes. Okay. Fifth grade. So whatever, wherever you're going with your education, remember that you might still get lost physically. Oh boy, where, what was that turn? I got lost on the road. Don't get lost spiritually. Remember that you're always a prayer away from Jesus. So speaking of a prayer, I have one that I'd like to read now. Let's fold our hands and close our eyes. Heavenly Father, please be with these students as they go where they do not know. As they seek to grow in knowledge, we ask that they can also grow in faith. As they attempt to conquer the world, we hope that they can conquer their fears. As they strive to find their place, we pray that they can find you. Please go where we can't go. Protect where we can't protect them. Give strength that we can't, that we can't and bring them home safely. Amen? Okay, I have a little card, even for you older ones. A little card. It's a little sheet, and it says... You are never lost if you follow Jesus. Thank you. Right, Lisa? There you go. There you go. Okay, and also, I had a picture to show you of Jesus with the Lamb. Very, very old picture that I've had for many years from Stone Mountain, Georgia. And I also, um, Randy's not with us today, but Randy Shaver, we'd like to celebrate her graduating from high school. 
we have a gift for her that comes in this little cute little graduation hat. And um, we'll see that Randy gets that. Okay, thank you. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you, Susie. It's good to see all you boys and girls this morning. You may go back and sit with your moms. <laughs> and congratulations and best wishes to Randy as she graduates this year. This time, does anybody have any joys and concerns or God sightings they'd like to share? Yes, Jean. Uh, I have prayers for Alex and for Travis. Prayers for Alice and Travis? Alex. 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 And Travelers. Okay. And my baby was 60 on Tuesday. Your baby was 60 on Tuesday. Okay. Others. Yes, Beth. It's not raining. It's not raining. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm getting hands all over. Kendra. First for Brooklyn, the little four year old who's not making surgery this week at the Philly Dental Center. A four year old who's Brooklyn. having surgery. surgery. Brooklyn. Brooklyn, who's having surgery this week. Okay. <coughs> Jane. Uh, I have a God moment. Uh, I know most of you know that I have a great granddaughter that is autistic and she does not speak. Um, last week she was in, she was very excited to see me, which never happened before. And she now has an iPad that has all of her things on it. And when they got gave it to her, she immediately pointed out 12 things and the teacher was amazed. But now she points to the thing and she is speaking. So that is such a God moment for me and for my family to know that through technology, she is learning how to speak. That's wonderful that your granddaughter is able to communicate with you through the wonders of technology. Do we have any prayer requests or God moments coming from Zoom? Perfect segue. I actually, yes, I actually have a God moment. This is Amy. So our work is going through the last year. Besides COVID transition, we're upgrading and changing software. So my day really consists of meeting with people that I've never met before. And one of my tech supports is um, a gentleman who lives out in Colorado. And he felt really bad about delaying his time and getting back to me. And when he did, we started talking and out of the blue, he asked me if I'm a follower of Christ. And we stopped training, but continued our conversation about Christ and God's will and how he has worked magic in our lives. And interestingly enough, we've both remained uh, acquaintances other than just work. So I felt like it was a really great way that we connected and continued to connect all the way to Colorado. All right. Through technology. Through technology. Bob. Yes, uh, Linda's home in recovery, and I would like to thank everybody, and I know she would too, for cards, prayers, and uh, everything that you've done for us. And uh, she'll be receiving some home therapy um, to get her legs strengthened up a little bit. She's still a little weak, but uh, there she is. She'll give you a big smile. <laughs> Thank glad, you, everyone. Glad to be here. Good to see you, Linda. Linda Van Gorder is home after a stay in the hospital. She will be getting some therapy, and we pray for her continued recovery. Others? I have a few unspoken prayer requests, um, and please pray for addicts and those who are battling depression. Any others? Yes, Susie. Uh, my sister Glenna's mother-in-law, Mary, has passed. Glenna, whose mother-in-law passed away. Is she still in the nursing home or was she able to come home? 
As far as I know, she's still, Judy Da is still at the nursing home. Okay, that's what I'm hearing also. Yes, Judy. Kelly, for healing. For healing? Kelly. Okay. And let's pray for all of those who will be winding up the school year or who have recently wound up the school year. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty and gracious God, we thank you for the rain that fills our wells and restores greenery and color all around us. And we thank you too, O oh God, for sunny days that allow us to be out of the house and enjoying the beauty and splendor of your creation. Lord, we thank you that you are a God who is always seeking to get our attention in one way or another, whether it's for, through the beautiful blue skies, the babbling rushing brooks, those moments of silence, and stillness where we pause to listen and seek your voice. Lord, sometimes you work through others, asking us questions and offering us prayer and guidance in the most unexpected places, reminding us that we are not alone, but you are with us. For this, we are grateful. We are grateful, Lord, that you are always there and listening, that you hear our prayers before we speak a word. And yet, God, you can't wait for us to turn to you and speak, because that shows we're seeking a relationship with you. It shows that we are seeking your friendship and guidance, your company and presence. Hear us now, Lord, as we speak to you with silence, heart to heart. spirit, comfort, and peace to those who mourn, and the light be the bright beacon of hope to those who are living in a world of darkness. Give them the strength to carry on, Lord, and to seek your guidance. Surely, Lord, the pres your presence is in this place not just this building, but out through the wires and in the homes of each one who has joined us here this morning. This is our worship and our gift to you, O oh God. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I invite you to give your attention to Jane as she shares with us the scriptures this morning. Good morning. Our Old Testament reading today is from 1 Samuel, chapter 8, verse 4 to 20, and 11, 14 to 15. Then the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, You are old, and your sons do not follow in your ways. Appoint for us then a king to govern us, like other nations. But the thing is, but the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to govern us. 
Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people in all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them, just as they have done to me from the day I brought them out of Egypt to this day, forsaking me and serving other gods. So also they are doing to you. Now then, listen to their voice only. You shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. So Samuel reported all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. And he said, These will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them to the chariots and to be his horses and to run before his chariots. And he will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties, and some to plow his ground and to reap his harvest, and to make his implements of war and the equipment of his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive orchards and give them to his courtiers. He will take one-tenth of your grain and of all your vineyards and give it to his officers and his corporators. He will take from your male and female slaves and best of your cattle and donkeys and put them to his work. He will take one-tenth of your flocks and you shall be his slaves. And in that day you will cry out because of your king, whom you have chosen for yourself. But the Lord will not answer you in that day. Israel's request for a king granted. But the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. They said, no, but we are determined to have a king over us, so that we may also be like other nations, and that our king may govern us and go before us and fight for us. Samuel said to the people, come, let us go to Gilgal and there renewed the kingship. So all the people went to Gilgal, and there they made Saul king before the Lord of Gilgal. There they sacrificed offerings of well-being before the Lord, and there Saul and all of the Israelites rejoiced greatly. Our gospel reading is from Mark 2, verses 20 to 35. And the crowd came together again, so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for his, the people were saying, He has gone out to his out of his mind. And the scribes who came down then from Jerusalem said, He has bezel, and, it, and by the ruler of the demons he cast out demons. And he called to them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against yourself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. But this end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, People will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemies against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness and is guilty of an eternal sin for that that they had said. He has an unclean spirit. The true kindred of Jesus. Then his mother and his brothers came and standing outside, they said to him and called him, a crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside, asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who ate around his, him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and mother. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand now for the glory of Papa.
Please be seated. Let us pray. Lord God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon this gathering this morning, surrounding us, filling us with your wisdom and instruction. Move in us, O oh God, so that everything we say and everything we do is a pure, holy, loving reflection of you that only gives you glory and honor and praise. In Christ's name we do pray. Amen. I'd like to start off with a little bit of background that happens directly before the passage in 1 Samuel. Just kind of a way to set the stage. Israel at that time is a ragtag band of refugees. They have wandered for 40 years through a wasteland until they arrived at their new home and split up into tribes or to clans, united by their covenant with and allegiance to God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Now, though, they're turning around and they are rejecting the God who saved them from Egypt, who led them across the desert wilderness, who provided them with food and water in a wasteland, protecting them, caring for them, loving them. Instead of rallying around their devotion to God and allowing God to be their unifying source, their strong deliverer, they are now demanding that they have a king so that they can be like everyone else. And being just like everyone else is so important to them that they say it not once in this passage, but twice. There's really a lot going on in this passage from Samuel, so let's take a closer look at it. The people are afraid. Change is coming, and there's nothing they can do to avoid it, because Samuel, their prophet, is getting old. He's going to die, and their leader will be no more. What are they going to do? Samuel's children, who should be stepping up into their father's footsteps, aren't any good because even though they are priests like Samuel, they have rejected God as much as the people have. We're told in the verses just before verse 4 that when Samuel became old, he made his sons judges over Israel. The name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of the second, Ab Abijah. They were judges in Beersheba, yet his sons did not follow in his ways, but turned aside after gain. They took bribes. They perverted justice. There must be something about being a prophet, because God chose Samuel to replace the prophet Eli because Eli's sons didn't follow in their father's ways, did not honor God. And now Samuel's boys are doing the same thing, history repeating itself. I'm sure there are many of us here who have mourned and wept and prayed because our children reject our ways the ways in which we have tried to bring them up. They turn their backs on what they've been taught. But even in the midst of that, there is hope for those of us who are mourning the ways of our children. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6 tells us to train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. There's also hope found in the New Testament. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slow about his promise, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. 
There is the open door. We, God is waiting for those who have been lost, as Susie was telling us in the children's sermon, those who have wandered astray spiritually. God is waiting for them to come to repentance because God doesn't want anybody to perish. Samuel tells people that they don't know what they're asking for. Verses 12 through 17 lays out to the Israelites what will happen if they get a king just like everyone else. The king will take for himself the best of their crops, all of their hard-earned harvest that they toiled for with blood and sweat and tears. The king's going to get it. And the king's going to take the best of their land and give it as presents to his courtiers, his soldiers, leaving the common people with fallow land. How then are they going to make their living? And verse 17 tells us because they will then turn around and become slaves to the king. The king will take their sons and daughters and their slaves to be soldiers and workers in his palace, home, and fields. So if the king takes all of your sons and daughters and slaves and all of your workers to go do his work, Who's going to do your work, Samuel asks. Who's going to take care of your crops? Hmm, they're going to be dependent on the king when they should be dependent <coughs> upon God. And yet, in spite of all of this, in verse 20, the Israelites declare that they still want a king who will fight our battles, who will go before us, and making this choice and giving us a name like that, they are implying that God either did not fight their battles for them or that God wasn't any good at it. Think about that a moment. We know that God has been with them. God led them on dry land through the river as they fled from Egypt. God has sent off and... Uh, okay, that was interesting. <laughs> God has sent off and battled and beat many different tribes through, for this people. And yet here they are saying that God's not good enough to go before them and fight their battles. And so they want a king just like everyone else else. And they went ahead and they made Saul, who was chosen by God, to be king before the Lord in Gilgal, as we're told in 1 Samuel eleven fifteen. 15. Now that can be read two different ways. The word before means, can be in front of, as I am standing up in front of all of you this morning, it could be in the Lord's presence, coming and standing before somebody in their presence. Or it can mean instead of. They made Saul king instead of the Lord. It can mean to come first. They made Saul to come first instead of the Lord. The Israelites, the people, are rejecting God as king of their lives in favor of a human king. This doesn't sit well with Samuel, who remains faithful to God, and it really upsets him. But God reminds Samuel that it's not about him with the small age. It's about him, God, with the big age. They want this king so that they can be like everyone else, even though they're not. Um, this reminded me, one of the things that we've learned, Brian and I, in our journey to be a pastor, is clergy taxes aren't like anybody else's taxes. We were fortunate to find a lady, she was the widow of a pastor, 
who did clergy taxes, knew what she was doing, and she described us as zebra. We stand out like zebras in a field of horses. If you think about it, horses are browns and blacks. Maybe you'll get an occasional palomino or pinto, but you don't typically see zebras, the black and white stripes. They stand out. Well, clergy stand taxes, stand out like a zebra in a herd of horses. The Israelites were standing out like zebras until they rejected God. They don't recognize that they're not like everyone else, but that God has chosen them, has set them aside. He did this through Abraham and Moses. From Genesis chapter 17, verses 4 through 8, this is the covenant that God made with Abraham. As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you. Kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And I will give to you and to your offspring after you the land where you are now an alien, all the land of Canaan, for a perpetual holding, and I will be their God. We too are not like everyone else, just as the Israelites were not like everyone else. We have been set aside as the children of God. But this only holds true if our lives show it. As Christians, we are called not to live like everybody else. We are not to be part of this world that we live in, but separate from it. Something that the Apostle Paul reminds us of quite often. Samuel pleads with the Israelites from Psalm 130, verses 7 and 8. O oh Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. Indeed, God is faithful and steadfast for a Savior, a Redeemer, comes from the house of David, the king who will follow Saul. And that Redeemer is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Christ, who calls us all his family and declares, as we heard in the gospel this morning, whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. Christ, who will one day return to welcome those who have accepted the invitation to be part of the family of God. Christ, before whom all nations, all rulers, all people will bow and worship and be held accountable. It is through him, the Son of God, Christ Jesus the Lord, that we are all redeemed that we are all made whole and reconciled to God, the Lord of all nations. This is the message that we are to take out through these doors and into the world around us. This is the message that we are not to be stingy with and keep to ourselves or those who come here on Sundays. This is a message of hope the message of transformation, the message of love that we are to give and share with all people. 
And this is what sets us aside so that we are not like everyone else. Let us pray. Lord God, even though you created us in your image and called us good, you have also called us aside to be your followers, reminding us of your covenant, reminding us of the gift of the Redeemer of Christ. And Lord, as we turn to Jesus, as we allow him to transform our lives, we are reminded that we are not like everyone else, but that we are beloved by you. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord, that we might help share this message with others. Sometimes in words, sometimes through actions. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One of the things that unites us and sets us apart is as we gather at the Lord's table. A table that is open to all who seek to live in peace with one another and in harmony before God. I invite you to turn in your bulletins to your insert or follow along on the screen. Today, we're going to try something a little bit different in serving communion. I'm going to stand with the basket over here up front and invite you to come down this aisle. I'll hand you the cup and you can return to your seats and take it then at your leisure. But Christ the Lord invites to his table all who love and serve him, who seek to live in peace and one another. May the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. May lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right. <laughs> And a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream when nations shall not lift up sword against nation neither shall they learn war anymore and so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven we praise your name and join their unending hymn Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection, <coughs> excuse me, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant with water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, and blessed it. Broke it. He took the bread and broke it after giving thanks to God and gave it to his disciples saying take eat 
for this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many. <coughs> Excuse me. For the forgiveness of sins, as often as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and in the building and gathered online through technology and on these gifts of bread and juice make them be for us the body and blood of christ that we may be for the world the body of christ redeemed by his blood by your spirit lord make us one with christ one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together boldly the prayer that Jesus taught us. Now Our Father, Father, who Lord art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As you come forward and receive your communion, I'd just like to remind you the altar rail is always open for anybody who would like to spend time in prayer. The table's prepared. Let God's people come.
take and eat the body and the blood of Christ. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself up for us. Grant that we might go this day renewed in spirit. And Lord, thank you for this gift of eternal and steadfast love through your Son, our Savior. Amen. Amen. I invite you to rise in body or spirit as we join in crown him with many crowns. to share earlier was for 31 years now this man has been by my side and supporting me and sticking with me we celebrated our anniversary this week as you go <laughs> he's the one that deserves the applause <laughs> go now in the grace of God the love of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit Go and have no other kings in your life other than the Lord God. Amen. Amen.